Everlasting Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this morning our hearts are full of joy for just another opportunity that you have given us to gather, to be in your presence, to be ministered upon by you. As we prepare, Lord, to hear from you, we pray that you are going to speak to every one of us in the way that we understand. You are going to speak into our lives. You are going to stir our hearts, O oh Lord. You will make our hearts receptive of your word. And so, Lord, this morning keep us alert and awake as you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning once again. I'm delighted to see you. My name is Mary Como, uh, for the sake of the visitors. I'm a born again Christian. I love the Lord and I feel so privileged uh, to be called or to be associated with uh, that great name. And this morning, um, I feel privileged to share the word of God. And for the sake of those who came a little uh, after we had read uh, the readings, we, our references are Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, and then Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4, there are about 11 verses. And uh, today, today, like you have seen in our bulletin, it is Trinity Sunday. Trinity. It is uh, one Sunday after Pentecost. Last Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost when uh, the apostles experienced the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And today we celebrate the, the, uh, the, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. And uh, this is, you know, the doctrine of Trinity. Uh, we, we talk about God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and uh, it has always been a subject of curiosity you know as Christians try to understand how the God who makes it so clear that he is the only God you know nevertheless has three persons and uh, this is a mystery of our faith and we may not fully understand it and understanding it really uh, should not be the issue. What is important is that we know we have, uh, that we can have a relationship with the Father, a God of love, and that this relationship comes through God the Son by the work of God the Holy Spirit. That is the key thing, that is the most important, that we can have a relationship with this God the Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, and by the work of God, the Holy Spirit. And th that is enough. So therefore, on this Trinity Sunday, uh, as we focus on the diocesan theme, as you come in at the entrance, there is a big banner there. I don't know whether you have had time to look at it, and it has breakdown of the theme of this year, which is practical ministry in our, in our diocese. And there is a theme for every month. And in the month of uh, June, the sub theme is practical investment in the kingdom of God. And the focus verse for this month is Galatians chapter six, verse nine, that says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. That is the focus verse this month. And uh, this morning, trying to link all that with the references that we read, Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 8, and Revelation chapter 4, uh, um, I hope that the Lord will um, talk to us as we seek to answer what is my purpose in the kingdom of 
God? What is your purpose in the kingdom of God? As a young Christian, as most of you are, what are you currently doing as an investment in the kingdom of God? An investment. You know an investment, you need to put in something. You need to, to plant something. You need to, you know, what are you currently doing as an investment? I know when we mention the word investment, what comes to your mind first is money, resources. But in the kingdom of God, is there something you're doing currently as an investment? <clears throat> and you looked at Isaiah, when you read Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 8, we see the call of the prophet Isaiah to invest in God's kingdom. There is the vision, the vision of God that um, Isaiah had in the temple in Jerusalem. And he saw uh, uh, our God seated on the throne. And the vision is accompanied by the shaking of the foundations. And we saw that when he read. And in Revelation chapter 4, we see another vision now of John, John the Apostle. He's being taken up, he's in the spirit, and it is near the end of his life. He's taken to heaven to, see, to witness the ongoing worship of God in heaven. And like we saw in Isaiah, John hears the threefold words, holy, holy, holy God almighty just like we saw in Isaiah chapter 6. And looking at the Isaiah, look at the way it begins. In the year that Uzziah died, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. That is how it begins. In an interesting way, Uzziah was, had been the king of Judah for 52 years. After a long period of strength, of prosperity, success, peace in Israel, the king was no more. A time came when he died. And of course, they had, they had Israel, we know, even from history, that they had always had enemies. Like the powerful enemy of, you know, of Israel, one is the Assyrians. And so now, in the absence of the king, of course, the, the, the Israel, you know, or, or these people are poised to invade Israel. And so it was a time of grief when King Uzziah died. People feeling alone and abandoned, uncertain. It was actually a, a national crisis. And Isaiah being the prophet carried, they carried the weight of the nation in his soul. And when he entered the temple that day, probably to, to seek the Lord and to, 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 to make his heart, you know, a little uh, easy. And while there, he had a vision. He had an experience of God that was more than words could contain. The, the Lord on the throne, high and exalted, and the angels, the angelic, uh, being singing, holy, holy, holy God Almighty, He is the, the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of His glory. And it was a transforming moment, a life changing experience. He went into the temple worried, wondering what are we going to do. And probably some of us this morning came feeling worried about a thing or the other. But Isaiah had that experience, a life changing. His whole life changed when he saw the majestic Lord seated on his heaven, heavenly throne. He thought the throne was empty because the king had died. But lo, no, the Lord was on the throne. And this morning, brethren, our Lord wants us to get our eyes upon him, whatever we might be going through. Many times, many times, issues of life uh, may block our vision of God. You know, we can feel secure in our jobs, 
in our homes we may feel secure and okay or in our leaders and it is only when God removes our props you know like when we become ill when we lose that job that we value more than anything else or when our leader dies that we take our eyes back to God when we ask ourselves what are we going to do now how will you survive? It is at that time, or at such a time, that we see, we are able to see the Lord. With the death of Uziah, the king, the throne was empty. The human throne was empty. Because he had held things together for such a long time, 52 years. But now they were asking, what will happen to us now? But when Isaiah looked to God, he received a vision of God. He was sitting on the throne. The throne was not empty. God had everything in control. What a marvelous relief. What an assurance, what a joy. Are you able to look beyond your circumstance today, whatever circumstance? Are you able to catch a vision of God enthroned? Are you worried about something and you're wondering what to do? Just like Isaiah was. This morning, can you say like Isaiah did? That it was when I lost my job that I saw the Lord high and exalted or when it was that unpleasant thing that happened, that is when I saw the Lord high and exalted, that it was when that toxic relationship ended that I saw the Lord high and exalted. In Revelation chapter four, Jesus in his great mercy gives us a glimpse of his glory and his throne room so that we can realize uh, what is really important and who he really is. He calls John, and we read that, sorry. He says, come up here, and I'll show you what must take place after this. And maybe this morning he's calling us. He's calling you this morning, come up here, and I'll show you what must take place after this. And in a very real way, when you read uh, Revelation 4, the throne room is in heaven, is open, and it is the center of the universe, the center of all creation. And there are those beings that are present in the heaven, in the eternal heavenly you know, throne, very amazing and powerful. The throne is not empty. It is not empty. There is someone who sits on this great heavenly throne all the time. From the time of Isaiah, like we read, to Revelation. The throne is occupied by one who has full control of the universe. And it's such a great comfort to be reminded this morning. It is such a great joy. You know, here on earth, we are engaged in a spiritual war. Though we are saved and we have Jesus on our side, we serve a spiritual war. And so we must keep our eyes on our Savior. Uh, if we are to win the daily battles, he won the war when he died on the cross, you know, to save us from our sin. But there are battles that we fight uh, in this life. The good thing is that he wins all of them for us. He wins all of them for us. All we need to do is to look up to him. So whatever else goes on in the throne room of heaven, we saw in Revelation, it is very clear that worship, worship is always taking place. So I think all we need to do is to worship God, whatever we are going through, because worship is immensely practical. It involves something we do, something we say, something we give. It involves action, something that uh, we need to practice. 
So what do you need to give to practically uh, invest in the kingdom of God? Is it your heart that you need to give? Is it your time? Your expertise? Because every one of us has something. There are those who can do praise and worship. There are those who can do the drums. There, there is uh, Ben who can do what he does so well. And all of us. What is it that you need to practically do as an investment in the kingdom of God so that you keep very close to this God? You know, seeing himself in God's light, Isaiah saw his sinful state when he got that vision. He, he, he re remembered that uh, he needed to confess because he was a man of unclean lips. Unclean lips, of course, are a reflection of unclean heart. We know out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we are told that an angel of the Lord dispatched from the throne of God brought a live coal from the altar before the throne. He touched the, the, the lips of Isaiah with it. You know the first thing God does is to remove that which would hold you away from him. He has a purpose and a plan for everyone. And for this poor world, he has a purpose and plan. He speaks to our need for meaning and purpose, you know, in our lives by calling us to do his work in the world without giving up, without getting weary, like we see in Galatians 6, 9. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. When we look at Isaiah verse 8, Isaiah had the divine call, and he said, when the Lord asked, who will go? Who will I send? And he said, here am I, send me. And that day in the temple, Isaiah encountered the spreader of God. He realized his own uh, unworthiness. He experienced God's forgiveness, and he surrendered to God's call. And so if you're here young and starting out in life, or you're at middle life or later in our lives, the need for purpose and meaning is always there. And in a preferred, you know, the affluent culture, you know, consumer, cul consumer culture like ours, it is easy to focus on that salary, on the status, material goals, and we neglect the questions of meaning and significance in our lives. This morning we are being reminded and we are being reminded that uh, we should regularly ask ourselves, why are we here? What difference does my life make in the kingdom of God? What is the meaning of the work that I do? How can I do something about the suffering and needs in the world? There is always so much, and uh, that purpose that the Lord created, created us for. It may not be, the, the vision may not be as dramatic as that of Isaiah. But there is whatever we do, whatever where God has placed us, we serve God by, you know, by serving others. But we should always remember whatever little we do, we are doing it unto the Lord and we are serving God. And so we should do it like we are doing it for the, uh, for the Lord. Just like as I said, said me. So what is your purpose as I wind up? What is your purpose? Have you? established? Have you identified your purpose? Where does God want to send you or to use you? To whom and to what tasks will God send you this month? In the month of June as we look at the practical you know, main, uh, investment in the kingdom of God. In which way do you give yourself to others in life? And again I ask, what do you need to give to practically invest in the kingdom of God? Is it your heart that you need to give? Is it your worship? You know, God is worthy to receive all our worship. Is it your time? Is it your resources? And what returns do you anticipate? So may the Lord help us to focus on him at all times, whether we are going through a hard or easy time, May the words and experience of Isaiah and John inspire us to draw ourselves closer to God. May we always remember that 
The throne is never empty. It is always occupied by the one who controls the universe. You know, like the psalmist in chapter uh, 29, the one we read, Psalm 29 reminds And does that remind us, Star, you are discouraged soul this morning? If you already allowed the Lord to occupy the throne of your life, you are here, you are born again. Ask him to point to the purpose of your life as we strive to invest in the kingdom of God. If you have not yet released yourself to the one enthroned, may the Lord open your eyes and your heart so that you can see him high and exalted. May you strongly um, desire to protect the joy, peace and worship that the Lord gives his own people. And that is my prayer this morning. May you go uh, out encouraged because the throne is never empty as we ponder on how we can practically invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.